Hallelujah. Okay, let us go into the word of God. We are going to read the word of God. I'm going to speak under a heading that we might also maybe understand and know what he's talking about. But I believe the spirit of the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us all go to the book of Pisalem, chapter 37, verse 3 to verse 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful word that you are giving to us today. Allow us to share it in your presence and Lord, speak to us one by one. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to speak today under the heading, Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. As Christians today, we need to have trust in the one that we are saying we believe in. Most of the time we say we believe in the Lord, we believe in God, but we do not trust him. We do not believe completely. Trusting in the Lord is to put everything that you own and everything that you have to his ability and to his understanding. In other words, there is nothing that you do on your own. You do it because there is somebody who is leading you to do whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, where we have read, the Bible says we must trust in the Lord. Yes, we can trust in the Lord. We can put our trust in the Lord. But the Bible goes on and say, we trust in him and we must do good. It means then, if you are saying, I'm trusting in the Lord, but you are doing evil, it means the source of what you are doing is not God. In other words, the source of what we do when we trust in the Lord is God himself. If you say you trust in the Lord, it means when bad things come to you, when problems come to you, when evil come to you, when attacks come to you, there is somebody that you completely lean on for refuge, for help, for everything that you want in life. Now the Bible is saying to us today, we must trust in the Lord and do good. Speaking by our own mouth and say we are trusting in the Lord, whereas we are not doing according to what the word of the Lord says. Because I believe that doing good means I'll be following what the Lord or what the Bible is telling me. So it means then if I'm not doing good, it means I'm not trusting in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I am walking in the road, but I'm doing partially the things that God wants me to do, it means I'm not trusting him. If I am walking in the road of salvation, and I'm doing half of the things that I'm supposed to do, it means I'm not trusting in him. If I'm saying I trust in the Lord, but the Bible says unto me, you must pray day in and day out. You must, you must meditate on the word of the Lord. You must stay in the word of the Lord. You must live according to the word of the Lord. And I found myself that I'm not doing part of those things that have been said I have to do them. It means I'm not trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. Then it means for me to say I trust in the Lord. It means I'm leaning on him. Everything about me is the Lord. If there's anything that I'm facing in love, the first life, the first thing, the first person that I have to go to will be the Lord. If there is any problem that I have right now, the first person that I'll run to will be the Lord. Why? Because he is the one that I trust. Many of us, we do say we trust in the Lord, but there are some other things that we are trusting in. That is why the Bible said that trust in him. And the second thing, after trusting, you must do good. 
When you do good, it then means that your trust will grow because you will be doing good. When you are doing good, doing good is a character of God. God loves us all, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, because God loves us all as his children, he has chosen me and you to be his own. Now, because we are his own, when we start to do good, we are doing one of the characters of God. The Bible says God is good. And we love to answer and say all the time. Hallelujah. Now, because God is good, when we trust in him, we must do one of those things that is a character of God being good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you think you are good? Are you good? Now the Bible goes on and says, dwell in the land. Which land now? Where must we dwell as children of God? We must dwell in the house of the Lord. I was loving some few days ago, I was loving and some other things that we were talking about and say, you know, when you don't have that revelation of dwelling in the house of the Lord, you go to the house of the Lord because there is something you are searching for only. When that something you are searching for, you have found it, you no longer go to the house of the Lord. So the Bible is advising us today or telling us today, or when we trust in the Lord, we dwell again in the house of the Lord. We don't dwell in the house of the Lord when there is need. We dwell in the house of the Lord permanently. In other words, the house of the Lord is our home. The house of the Lord is our land. The house of the Lord, that's where we find peace. The house of the Lord, that's where we find joy. The house of the Lord, that's where we find everything that we are searching for. It is our land. Hallelujah. Now as Christians, we must again dwell in the house of the Lord. We are needed in the house of the Lord. Not that we are needed to do something. We are also needed so that we can be channeled and we can be groomed and we can be made that which God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in other words, it means for you to be here in the house of the Lord today, you are here because you are dwelling in the land that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the third thing the Bible says, so when you trust in the Lord, you feed on his faithfulness. We do read verses and chapters and things in the Bible, but some of the things we jump them because of lack of understanding and knowledge. The Bible said feed in his faithfulness. In other words, when you say you trust in the Lord, you yourself also, you are faithful. Why? Because God is faithful. You cannot say I trust in the Lord whereas you are not faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot say I'm walking with the Lord whereas you're not faithful. There are a lot of things that we are not faithful in. I won't mention them, but we know where we are not faithful as children of God. The Bible says if you utter by your own mouth and you say, I trust in the Lord, you must be faithful. Because he is faithful. We must dwell in his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. You don't avail yourself, like I said before, because there is a need. You don't avail yourself because uh, you find favor somewhere. You don't avail yourself because you are searching for something. You avail yourself. Why? Because you delight or rather the things that God is doing. One day I was reading the Bible and I started saying, you know, the Bible says, the grace of the Lord is sufficient for us all. It means then, when I'm in the house of the Lord, because I love the things of the Lord, even though God does not grant me a job right now, but still I still love to be with him. 
Even if the Lord does not give me marriage right now, God, even though it's like that, I still love to be with him. Even though God is not healing me of this pain that I have and a thousand other people are being healed, I still love to be in this God or with this God. Why? Because I just love to be with him. Remember this thing that is so important. For us to delight in the Lord, it is because the Lord has done something great and wonderful in our lives. God has saved us. God has made us to be what we are and who we are today. We are what we are because of his grace and mercy. We are standing here today is because he has loved us. Now, because of that thing that God has done for us, we delight to be closer to him and trust in him more so that whatever that is still coming, that is still in the way, must reach us. But because if we don't trust in him, that which is coming, we are not going to see it. Why? Because we don't trust in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, as children of God, we must trust and trust faithfully and delight in him. When you love the things of God, let me use this word. When you love the things of God, you don't want anything that is said about God to miss you. When you are in the house of the Lord, you open your ears wide open so that you can hear that which God is saying. Why? Because you know that what that which you are going to hear today is going to help your life in the future. Whatever that we hear from the house of the Lord, it's not going maybe to work for us now, 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 today, today, today. Others is going to work today, today, today. Others is going to work for us next week. Others next month. Others next year. Whatever, whatever that's going to help. But the issue is, I must be found loving the things of God. Most of us, we are missed by the miracle of these ways. You know, when you trust in the Lord, for God to work in your life becomes so simple. When you believe in the Lord, for God to transform your life, when you trust him, for God to transform who you are, it's very simple. Why? Because you delight and you are dwelling in his house. You are always there with him. You are closer to him. You start to live the life that makes him to be happy. You live a life that makes him to feel fulfilled when he looks at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you trusting in the Lord? It goes on and says, where we have read, commit your ways to the Lord. Commit your ways. What does it mean? When the Bible says, let us commit our ways, it means whatever I want to do, the person that I go first to is the Lord. The person that I go to to ask what I am about to do is the Lord. In other words, wherever my feet takes me to, the Lord knows about it. Whatever I do in my life, the Lord knows about it. Whatever thing that I'm struggling with, the Lord knows about it. In other words, everything about me, the Lord must know. Hallelujah. The thing that you are, you are, you are having no food today, the Lord must be knowing about it. Remember, the Lord knows everything about us. Why? Because he loved us. But as his children, we go to him to show him that we trust him. When we let him know about everything about us. Not that there is a need for us to go and explain. But when we explain to him, that is the reason. That makes him to know and acknowledge us in our trusting in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we trusting in the Lord? Do we totally trust in him? Then the Bible says when we trust in him. When we believe in him, when we give our ways in him, to him, the Bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts. Now I'm speaking about the benefits. After doing all what the Bible is saying, the Bible says he will give us whatever that we ask of him. Hallelujah. When you go to the father, children of God, 
The father starts by searching, by looking inside of you. What is it that you are doing that makes you worthy to be given what you are crying for? Hallelujah. Most of us here for the first time when we come into the house of the Lord, we were healed because of his mercy and grace. We were given whatever that we are given by the Lord because of his mercy and grace. Hallelujah. But from there, God wants us to start trusting in him. At least he has given us the first thing, that which we were crying for. And then he saved us. The Bible says, when you start to dwell in the house of the Lord, when you trust in him, when you delight in him, when you do whatever that he wants you to do, when we walk with him, when you trust in him to the extent that there is nothing that you can do that is above what God wants. God starts to give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand now that for you to find what you are crying for, you must be trusting in the Lord. For God to give us when we were born again, when we were coming for the first time, it was because of his mercy and his grace, because he wanted us to know and to see that indeed he is a good God as they are saying or as we are saying. But now because you are here as a child of God, as a Christian, I'm speaking to Christians now, you have to work for that which you are searching for. There is nothing that you will get freely. If you are not doing things according to the way of the Lord, you will never reach where you are supposed to reach. Many of us Christians, there is something that we are crying about and we say, Unkari is like Mudimu is not seeing me. No, God is seeing you. The problem is, God is afraid to give you because you don't trust in him. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7, the Bible said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. The Bible is trying to explain or to open our eyes to understand. You are here today as a child of God and you have a cry. Your cry is, I am crying that the Lord may bless me. Why must the Lord bless you? I am crying for the Lord to bless me so that the people that I'm living with can know that I am serving a good God. I want God to bless me. Why? So that the people that I'm working with can then know the type of God that I'm serving. It's a cry of each and every Christian. I'm crying for God to bless me so that the privilege that I'm living in can know that the God that we are serving is a mighty God. So that the Bible is saying unto us children of God, when you trust in the Lord, that's where God will bless you. God is afraid then to bless us if we don't trust in him. Because we'll go and give honor to wrong people and wrong gods while we don't give honor to him as he's supposed to be given honor. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. In other words, for us Christians, now that we know of his grace and mercy, when you trust more unto him, you will be blessed more. When you trust little unto God, you will be blessed little. When you trust average unto God, you will be blessed average. That is why we see in our Christian life or our daily life, you will find that there are other people who are being blessed more than others. I've found a secret. They trust more than others. What is trusting in God? I've explained in the beginning. Leaning completely in the Lord. Not in your own understanding. Not in your own wisdom. Not in the things that you know. Not in the knowledge that you have. You lean completely in Him. When you do things, you do things according to His word. The Bible says He will bless us. And when He bless us, we must hope more in Him. We are here, all of us today. We are saying, God, we believe that you are going to take away our situations. 
God, we believe you are going to change our situations. Lord, we believe that you are going to heal some of us who are here. Deliver us some of us who are here today. You are going to do mighty miracles in our lives today. Why? Because we hope in you. Our hope is in you, Lord. When your hope is in the Lord, you don't trust that there is anything that can help you except God himself. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. It says, trust with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. When you trust, you trust with your own heart, wholeheartedly. And you lean not on your own understanding. And you believe that there is nothing that can take you to where you want to go except the Lord. There is nobody who can help you except the Lord. There is nothing that can help you except the Lord. There is nobody who can give you what you are crying for except the Lord. That's hoping in the Lord. That's trusting in him. What happens to us is this. When situations come to us, we become mixed up. We start to run helter-skelter. So they say. And then when you are running there and there and then and then, you meet a lot of explanations and ways. And those explanations and ways will make you to be confused the more. And then when you are confused the more, you start to do wrong things. But there was only one thing that you have to do. Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. Hope in Him. Trust that He can do it for you. Hallelujah. If we then trust that the Lord can do it for us, we will never run there and there because we know where our secret is. Our secret is in the Lord. What we want is in the Lord. What I'm searching for is in the Lord. What I need is in the Lord. Everything that I want is life is in the Lord. The only thing that I have to do, I must dwell. Hallelujah. The only thing that I do, I have to be faithful. How many of us are we faithful here today? Are we faithful in the Lord? Sometimes, but sometimes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go then and read the book of Psalm chapter 125 verse 1. It says, those who trust in the Lord, I like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. When you trust in the Lord, number one, the Bible says you are blessed by him. And number two, the Bible is saying, when you trust in the Lord, you are like Mount Zion. You are not moved by anything. There is nothing that can come to you and will move you. Remember, when you come to the house of the Lord, you are going there because you delight in the Lord, isn't it? Hallelujah. Now, when things start to happen... In the house of the Lord, there is nothing that moves you. Because you trust the Lord that you have found in that place. You trust in the Lord that you have found in his house. And you have told yourself, I'm going to dwell in this place until God is visible in my life. Hallelujah. The Bible says we won't be moved if we trust in him. I want to explain this. When we trust in the Lord, for us not to be moved, is because everything about us is God. And you know that if I can move from this place now, and I go to another place, I would be lost. 
Because this God, the Lord that I found here, might not be the Lord that I will find there. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm telling the truth. I will tell you why I say so. Because now, when you are here in the house of the Lord, you will start being you fed by soft porridge. You were fed by milk. Huh? You were taught the witches and the witchness of this house, how we witch and how we do things. Is that right? And after we have taught you how to witch and how to do all these things, we teach you then how to be a doctor of witching and doing all these kind of things. Now when you have reached that position where God knows now that you trust in him, then you can start to be blessed and do things according to the way of God. Now if you live here and go somewhere else and tell yourself I'm going to go forward trusting the Lord there, you are a liar. Because now when you reach there, they must first teach you how to wish their own way. Am I right? Hallelujah. When you are here in Charis, we will tell you, Daddy will tell us everyone needs deliverance. And when we are here, we will raise our hands and say, Lord, I want to be delivered too. And now you run away. You go somewhere else. When you reach there, they say, everyone must start standing by the head first. Then everything will follow. I'm not saying churches are wrong. You must understand me. I'm just saying, when you dwell where you are dwelling, it's easy for God to bless you and take where you want to go. Why? Because it's long you've been there. It's long you've been seated there. The Lord things are moving, they're not moving, but you stay. Things are happening, they're not happening, but you stay. God is blessing you, he's not blessing you, but you stay. God is healing you, he's not healing you, you stay. God is taking you up, he's not taking you up, you stay. Why? Because you are dwelling in the house of the Lord. You are trusting in this God that you believe in. You hope in him, you believe that someday God is going to take me to another level that I'm waiting for. I want to go to that place one day. Why? Because you trust fully unto him. It takes time for a Christian for you to make your trust to be built up to the level that God can start blessing you. You can give a, you can give a child BMW right now and say, even if the child is six years old, he can talk, she can talk, or she can do this and this, and give the car to that little baby and say, drive this car. There's a possibility, a huge 100%, that that baby is going to make a very huge accident. You know why? Still a little baby. This person needs to be fed and to be fed and to be fed and to be fed and to be fed. After being fed, when the baby is full now, he can then stand on his own and say, Now, I trust in the Lord. I can drive this car. I trust in the Lord. I can go where I want. I trust in the Lord. I can be what I want. I trust in the Lord. I know He can do it for me. Hallelujah. Are we there? Glory to Jesus. Let us finish. I want us to finish. Pisalem 118 verse 8 to 9. I love this one. It says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in men. I was asking myself, why by Willie Moe is sorry? It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your trust in men. And when I was asking myself that kind of question, I say, it means you can never trust anybody. Can you tell the person that is close to you, I don't trust you. I, I don't trust you. I will tell you why I'm saying so. The Bible says it's better to trust. Do you know why the Bible says trust? Because in him there is life. 
In him there is everything we want. In him there is healing. In him there is progress. In him there is breakthrough. In him there is everything, everything that you need. It is there in God. But now this man, Mutuo, Analeka Seal. The only thing that you can do to the man is to confide and put your confidence in him. And tomorrow, the one child will show you. You can go to a person, you sit down, you talk, 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 and you complete your things and you finish your story. Tomorrow, when you come and say, I've got somebody, I was standing with him, I was talking with her, and we agree on this. Let me call her or him so that he can come and explain to you. I don't know anything. She never told me. Now, when you trust in the Lord, the Lord God has got everything and anything that man can give to you. And there are also a lot of things that man cannot give you. But all these things that you need, they are found in the Lord. The only thing that is needed for you to do is to trust in him. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is, do you trust the Lord? It's better to put your trust in the Lord but, than put your confidence in men. Men can change tomorrow. Men can kill you tomorrow. Men can change your story tomorrow. But if you can trust in God, he will never, never leave you alone. He will never run away from you. He will never leave you in trouble alone. He will be there to take charge of whatever situation you have. But the only thing that we have to do as children of God, we must trust in him completely. Let us not trust in the things of the world. Let us not trust in men. Let us not trust in the prosperity of this world, finances of this world, breakthroughs that come through the things of this world. Let us trust in the Lord and we believe that as we trust his name, all these things that we are searching for are found in him. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, what is it that you are searching for today? What is it that you want today? Everything that you are searching for is found in the Lord. Most of us, when we are, we come because we are sick. We've got problems. Above all, some of us, we are here because we want to grow spiritually. We want the word of the Lord to groom us so that we can understand the word of the Lord more and more. Now, in all these things that we are searching for, children of God, can we trust in the Lord? Hallelujah. Can we put our trust in the Lord. God can do it for you today. But he needs you to trust in him. God can take you to that job today. But he needs you to trust in him. God can give you that promotion you are crying for today. But he needs you to trust in him. God can heal you right now, today. But you need to trust in him. God can elevate and take everything up for you today. But he needs you to trust in him. God can take all these enemies that you are talking about. I've got a lot of enemies. My life is not going well. God can do it for you right now, today. But the issue here is trust in him. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we must trust in the Lord. We must trust him wholeheartedly. Because he will bless us. Because he will always be with us. And he will never leave us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us read Psalm 73 verse 28. Trust him. Trust the Lord. So you can declare all his good works. 
When you trust in the Lord, you are able to speak about his goodness, about his good works, about the things that he is doing in your life, about the, his wonderfulness in your life. Now, when you don't trust in him, that's what I said in the beginning, you tend to give glory and honor to somebody else rather than God. Now, when it is God that you trust in, everything that is happening to you, you will say, Father, thank you. If today you walk out of this house and you are going home and you meet somebody just, and that person just started insulting you and talking all these kind of words. When you go, you just say, Father, thank you. Because the insults that you came across were challenging your faith. Were challenging your stand. And God has allowed all these things to happen to you because he trusts you that you can be able to do them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can give an example, let us look at the life of Job. I'm finishing. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 2, there and 3, Job was very rich. Hmm? He was having everything. And then the devil and his servants were there to present themselves. And God, because he trusted. God, because why? He trusted. God was never going to say, have you seen my servant Job? If he was not trusting him. Are you getting me? If God was not trusting this man, he was never going to say, have you seen my servant? Because in all the earth, there is no one like him. Even if you can insult him, he just trust in me. Even if you can say whatever you say, he just trust in me. And then the devil said to the Lord, allow us now just to go and touch his life. We want to see if he will go on trusting you. We want to see if you'll go on praising you. I know if I can go and do that, he will insult you. And then God said to the devil, go and try what you want to try. And the worst happened to Job in only one day. A very rich man became a very poor man in one single day. And as you read the Bible, the Bible says, after that he developed sores all over his body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And he was supposed to go out of the house and go to a place where they put ashes so that so that he can scratch himself and put the ash maybe on the blood that is coming out, whatever. In other words, the worst happened to him. Now, this man Job, the Bible says, as he was in the pain and the mockery of people and the talkings and the mouth of people, he didn't deviate from his love to the Lord. Until Umama Job reached him and said, mm -mm, this situation now is worse. Why don't you insult this God now and die in peace? The Bible says Job never insulted the Lord. He never agreed. Even friends came to him and said, we know you are a righteous man. We know you are a good man now. But why are these things happening to you? I believe some of us here, there are people who might come to us and ask us the same questions. We know you are a Christian. We know you are going to that church. We know you are praying, but why are you not getting a job? Why are you still in the same situation like last year? Why is it like there's no change in your life? The Bible says when the friends of Job were speaking with him, 
he would explain to him to them and explain to them about the goodness and the wonderfulness of God and the good things that God has done for him you know the riches that God has given to him you know everything good that God even though he was feeling pains he will speak about the goodness of the Lord even though they will say unto him i i read about the, another verse says the friend sent to him and said ah job man just repent and he said, no, I know I didn't do anything. If this is happening to me, it is the will of God. It's fine for me. I came here on earth being empty. I'll also live being empty. So what's the use of having all these things? Now, because God was trusting in Job, it means that's why he allowed this temptation to come to his life. Knowing fully that Job will be able to stand the temptation. Because of your trust in God, there are temptations that will come to tempt you, to shake you from your faith, to shake you from that which you believe in. Are you going to be able to stand and trust God the more and go on trusting in him? It won't be easy for you to trust in him if you don't have the foundation of building up the trust of God in you. You need to have that foundation. You need to know that it's God that can do everything for you. You need to be having roots in him. You need to be rooted in him. You need to be rooted in his word. You need to be rooted in his presence. When temptation comes, they will never shift you or take you away from the love of the Lord. You will tell the temptation, no, you can happen to me, that's fine. But I will never leave my God. After everything that has happened to the life of Job, Job was left still standing. Why? Because he trusted in the Lord. And the Bible says... God came back and blessed him more than before. His blessings were too much. So let me tell you, children of God, when we trust more in the Lord, when we give our hearts totally to the Lord, when we believe him more and more and more, God blesses us more and more when we have passed the temptation, the test that comes into our life. If you are a Christian, you must meet a test. And when the test comes, it's coming to test your trust in the Lord, your faith in the Lord. How much do you believe in him? But if you can be able to pass that temptation, after the temptation, there is a blessing. That's how God works. Hallelujah. After every temptation that you are in right now, let me promise you, if you hold on unto the Lord, there is a blessing that is coming behind that. After passing that test you are in right now, there is a blessing that is coming on the other side. It needs you only to hold on and trust him the more. Believe in God that he can do it for you. The situation that you are in today is not a situation that will take your life. It just needs you to focus and trust in the Lord. And this focus is brought about not by anything else. By dwelling in his house. And when you dwell in his house, there is only one thing you'll hear. God says, the Bible says, the word of the Lord says. And each and every time when we are hearing God says, the Bible says, the word of the Lord says, your faith raises, your faith grows, your trust grows. And when it grows, God will start to bless you according to what you want in life. And God will also do more about the things that you are asking and praying for. Why? Because you trust in him. The Bible says when you trust in the Lord, the Lord will never allow you to be put to shame. Remember when you trust him. They know that you trust him. Now the day you fall down. Uh -oh, they will ridicule the Lord. They will speak bad things about the Lord. Huh? They will curse the Lord. We were saying this God can do it. Now look at him. It means this God can do it. That is why you hear the Bible says, he will never allow Chirizi me to be put in shame. Why? Because I trust him. Why? Because my heart is in him. Why? Because everything about me is him. And God knows if he can allow you to be put to shame. 
Even if there can be a temptation that will come to you today, God will give you the way, the strategy to go out. As long as you trust in him. So Baba and she, most of us, when we are in temptations and when we are in, in things, in bad situations, we become confused. We no longer know what to do. Do you know why? You are not drilling. The only thing that you know is touch not my anointed one and do my prophets no harm. But if you jola, if you are sinning now, God will, oh, Satan will touch you. If you are a Christian and you are not doing the right thing, oh, Satan will visit you. And when he visits you, you will start quoting this scripture. I've heard a lot of people, I was laughing another day. Somebody was quoting this word to me. I was laughing. Touch not my aunt and do my prophet. How jola? When you are stealing, what do you want God to do now? The Bible says, let's trust in him and dwell in his faithfulness, dwell in his house, and we do good. Let us be stupid of the Lord and we see what God is going to do with Allah, our lives each and every day of Allah. We trust in him to an extent that we are able to say, if it not God, there is nothing I can do. If God didn't say it, I'm not going to do it. If the word of the Lord doesn't allow me, I'm not going to do it. If the Lord of the Lord is not written in the book of life, I'm not going to do it. Why? Because what I do is according to the word of the Lord. Finish Clar. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you trust in the Lord? Most of the time we do blame God and say God is not seeing us, but we are trusting him. Kantiri, now we ourselves we know that somewhere, somehow, we are not in him. Somewhere, somehow, we are not living the right way. Somewhere, somehow, we are not doing things the right way. Somewhere, somehow, we are not doing things according to the will of the Father. Somewhere, somehow, we are not walking the walk of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, can you trust in the Lord? Can you trust in the Lord? As from today, can you trust in the Lord? Can you trust and believe in Him? He will give your heart's desires. Hallelujah.